Hello, Sabine. Hello, Jan. Three days ago, uh, sports results has been released at uh, TCT by uh, Gunnar Pepe. And it is a very interesting study, to my opinion. Why? Because, in fact, for the first time, we, we have this uh, triple arm randomization between BMS, DCB, it's a sequence B from Brown, mm -hmm. and DS as a, as a third arm. And in this case, it was Eluvia. The design is a non study study comparing DCB to BMS and superiority design uh, for DS versus BMS. Which is also particular is a primary endpoint because it's late in mind loss. And so we observe, we note the results today during uh, the session. And so I want to have your feedback about this preliminary uh, data. As you have said before, we do not have so much comparative effectiveness research. And of course, for that point, it's always important that new data is emerging. Um, there are definitely more, uh, quite some several issues with this trial, and I, I think we all wait for more details. First of all, what I found interesting is the rather long lesion length of 22 centimeters. We don't, as a mean average length, we don't have so many trials focusing on this population. Um, the DES concept, I think, has been well established, especially with the Luvia stand in several trials, so it really makes sense to go for a superiority design here compared to BMS. Um, late lumen loss as an endpoint, as an angiographic endpoint, is interesting but also a bit challenging as we all know. It's really difficult to bring patients back to do a follow-up angiogram for an SFA study at least, as we really can judge that very well by duplex ultrasound. Um, so I think these are major limitations for this trial. Um, the superiority of Alluvia I don't think has surprised anybody. Did it surprise you? It's consistent with previous exactly. data, so, yeah. but you know, we need more than one RCT to confirm the value of one device. So it's a confirmation of uh, this device. So, but which is the trend is to compare the CB and DS. The study was not designed to assess this point, I, I, I guess. Yeah, it, it wasn't designed to assess that. And of course, I mean, it really studied one drug-coated balloon, as you have mentioned before, which was the sequent balloon. So it's, it's very difficult to translate or transfer these findings to other balloons, other drug-coated balloons we so have you, in the field. you don't believe in a class effect mm -hmm. for DCB? No, I do not. And especially when we look at, at this specific DCB, we do not have these large clinical trials uh, with uh, very reassuring uh, patency rates. So that is really a limitation when I interpret these uh, clinical trials and results. The high bailout standing rate didn't really surprise me and we had long lesions in here. I would have I think I would have estimated that DCB plus such a high bailout standing rate would perform maybe better. But of course, we have to look here in more details into the results. And I mean, what was really surprising for me was the high TLR rate we observed in this specific group of DCP plus bailout standing. It was, I think, a bit over 80%. Yeah. So this is actually what we usually see also in rather complex lesions as a one-year primary patency rate, but not really as a TLR rate. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have to in fact that it's preliminary data, first release, we should have more details about the results and to make a further analysis and discussion perhaps together. Would be great. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for your effort.